the winter season comes to an epic conclusion as we crown a champion. Eight of the top Hearthstone players from Europe have gathered to dust off their best decks and duel until only one player remains. The winner earns a spot at the Hearthstone World Championship, a $25,000 first place prize, and of course, bragging rights. Whose preparation, passion, and belief in the heart of the cards will lead them to victory. Pull up a chair and find out as the 2016 Hearthstone Europe Winter Championship begins. Eight players arrived, six remain. It's time to crown a European champion. Welcome one, welcome all. Gather around the hearth. It's time to conclude the Europe Winter Championship live from Hollywood, California. My name is Dan Frodan Show. I'm joined by Robert Wing, the man with the best goatee in the house, as well as Brian Kibler, the man with the best hair in the house. Uh, I'll gladly take that silver medal. Uh, I definitely think you guys are looking extra sharp today. How are you feeling? Do I get a bronze medal if I don't have hair, or do I just not get to compete in that? <laughs> it, it, matches, it matches your facial hair very well, Rob. So I would say a bronze for you, for sure. Great. Then I'm doing great, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Rob, how about yourself? <laughs> or uh, uh, Brian, I was going to say, well, yeah, just, just keep wanting to hear what Rob has to say. But no, do. I'm doing great, too. I'm uh, really looking forward to uh, seeing some more great matches today. We have uh, you know a lot of great competitors remaining, and um, I'm hoping we'll have uh, some, some exciting games to the end. We will have exciting games. We also will be unveiling a legendary minion from the Whispers of the Old God set before the final match today so make sure you guys keep your eyes peeled all throughout the broadcast because we want to see old we want to see what the old gods have in store and i think it's going to be really exciting to see i also want to see what tj is up to over at the sidebar with a couple of our lovely chats from over beyond the pond so let's check in with them Thank you very much, Dan. And once again, welcome everybody to the sidebar. Again, like we're doing throughout the weekend, we break it down some of the action throughout the day. Joining me today is going to be three-time back-to-back-to-back national freestyle UK yo-yo champion, Saddle. Raven's here also. Uh, Saddle, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing so much better after that glowing introduction, TJ. Thank you so much. But yeah, I was already super excited to be here. Finals day. Can't wait. Let's just get it started. And Raven, excited for today as well, despite your lackluster <laughs> intro. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing a lot worse after that underwhelming introduction, especially followed there uh, after Souls. But yeah, I'm doing good overall, and I'm uh, just really looking forward to see how good these games are going to be today, and looking forward to see this legendary minion as well. Yeah, every single match today has something on the line, uh, ha uh, has elimination on the line. So it's going to be a super exciting day, and we're going to crown the Hearthstone Championship Tour Europe winner champion. But let's take a look at the schedule. We're going to start off with the decider match for the group stages. Dr. Hippie versus Nick Slay first off, and then Diggin versus Bunny Hopper. After that, we'll move into the semifinals, where Pekrovec and Naaman are waiting to find their opponents. And of course, we'll round off the day after our legendary card reveal with the grand finals. So, Saddle, uh, as we take a look at the groups and how they played out, I want to get your thoughts on what what stands out to you today. What are you looking forward to? Uh, I mean, I think it's the easy line to go to, but the two players that we already see in semifinals, Neyman and Prokrovac, are the two standouts of the tournament so far. It's just worked out that the players who have progressed through naturally have just been the most impressive standout performers, high level of play from them. So I'm, if I had to pick a winner, it would be out of those two, I think, at this point. And Raven, who's a player to look out for today? Yeah, I think the uh, the Bunny Hopper and Diggin match is going to be really interesting because both these guys have uh, very similar lineups. It's going to be really tough for each one to try and like uh, push mm. ahead in the yeah. match. All right, well, lots of exciting action today, but we're going to send it over to Nimch, who's standing by Fireside to give us a deeper look into the Hearthstone Championship Tour. Nimch, how's it going over there? Thank you so much, TJ. It's going great. And I want to welcome everybody to the fireside here at Dalaran and N. The seats are ready for our card slingers to battle. This is the last day for them. We had two great, day, great days of matches and two players, unfortunately, eliminated, Cereza and Tars. But today is the day. Six guys remaining, and every match is elimination match. Life or death for those guys, depending if they win or lose. But before we talk about the matchups, before we talk about the lineups, let's talk about how they got here. And let's talk about the HCD format. Uh, those players qualified through the point system for the preliminary tournament. They could also become the Tavern Hero to get into the preliminary tournament. In the preliminary tournament, they were fighting versus the best players in Europe to get to the top eight. And um, here they are in the Europe Winter Championship, fighting for a chance to become the uh, qualified for the World Championship and become the first 2016 European champion. Guys, you yourself were amazing yesterday on social media, supporting those guys and sending your feedback. Let us know today as well on Facebook and on Twitter, at Play Hearthstone. Use the hashtag ACT, HCT. 
send the energy to your guys, support your players, and let us know who do you think is your favorite. I think the cast is already now, so Frodan, how are you guys doing? I'm a little spooked out, man. I think <laughs> Hearthstone cards aren't the only thing being influenced by the old god whispers. Apparently, we're playing for life and death with some of these cards. <laughs> Serious <laughs> consequence. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just want to let everyone know, Cereza yeah. and uh, Tars are fine. I mean, you won't see them on the broadcast, so you pretty much have to trust yeah. me on that, but they are fine. They are eliminated, <laughs> but uh, hopefully we will see them around. Uh, but, you know, it's all fun and games, except today it does get a little bit more intense. I mean, Nimsh was on to something in the sense that uh, we're going to be crowning a champion for Europe, and meaning that they will get $25,000 and also a direct spot guaranteed for BlizzCon Hearthstone World Championship later this year. It's going to be really uh, it's, it's going to be really cool to see who's going to be able to handle themselves. Today, I think it's going to be a lot of nerves on the line because they're very close to their goal. So let's go ahead and get started. Nimsh mentioned to hashtag HCT on social media. Remember, we'll be voting for your players throughout the day and just join in the conversation. Maybe you don't have a vote. Maybe you're just still learning the players for the first time. If you hashtag Dr. Hippie or Nick Slay, two fan favorites right now in my book, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what these guys got. Yeah, Nick Slay uh, has come in here and really made a, a name for himself over the course of this weekend, being an extremely expressive player that people in the chat are enjoying watching. So uh, looking to see what Nick Slay brings. All right, so let's go ahead and meet our players. Our first one, Robert, you mentioned him. Hailing from Germany, it's Nick Slay. Right, the extremely emotive Nick Slay, master of the dance game, uh, talks to himself a lot, but I like to think he's also <laughs> talking to us and the people in chat, so uh, that's Nick Slay looking to see what he can do here, if he can make it to that top four and eventually to the finals. I mean, a picture says a thousand words, especially for Nick Slay, and uh, I mean, a gif of Nick Slay speaks a million <laughs> words. Uh, if you get to see him ride through the entire six stages of grievance, he's going to be going up against the cold stone, cold hearted Dr. Hippie from Ukraine. Yeah, this match is sort of a, uh, a, a uh, match of opposites here. There's Nick Slay, the ever emotive, and, and Dr. Hippie, as you mentioned, the uh, sort of cold, calculating Ukrainian card slinger, kind of in the, in the tradition of Nyria and Kalento. Uh, Nick Slay actually called him the mysterious challenger in the, uh, the introductory interviews, and uh, definitely uh, has, has put his name out there to be remembered after this event. Yeah, I oh well, you know I, I was I was glancing over at Dr. Hippie. It looks like he's trying not to smile right now <laughs> whenever he looks at Nick Slay, and I get the same exact reaction. But now is not the time to be losing focus. <laughs> uh, Dr. Hippie also has been in tune to a lot of these other things. He's been noticing his opponents getting a little nervous. He, when he played Cereza uh, earlier this weekend, he was constantly glancing at his opponent, and recognizing, uh, making some reads based off of how they're reacting to their own cards. So one thing going for Dr. Hippie is because he's more calm and collected, it's harder. To read him. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he he's a player who, this is actually one of his very first tournaments. I believe the, for his first tournament was the preliminary. Right. So he's he's someone so who... So second tournament, technically. Well, yes, yes, yes. This, I said one of his first tournaments. Oh, <laughs> but, okay, okay. but yeah, no, he is, he's a player who, uh, who has prepared primarily by himself, but clearly has the sort of internal resolve to uh, keep his emotions under control, which we have seen get the better of some players in this event. I did see an interesting uh, tweet yesterday on social media from uh, another Hearthstone pro player who was basically suggesting that it's not necessarily even what you bring and how you play it so much as your ability to keep cool under pressure. And uh, Dr. Hippie has shown the ability to do that in spades. Nick Slay, not as much. Obviously, very expressive. Uh, have to see how he lines up against, as we said, a very reserved player in Dr. Hippie. Yeah, that's a pretty interesting thing. To, to hear, especially from some of your peers as well on social media. Speaking of social media, we do have some of the early votes in. Looks like Nick Slay's compatriots are getting some support for him on the social on the social media. So make sure again to hashtag uh, and just join in on the conversation. We're going to be showing the tweets on the broadcast uh, throughout the day. So if you don't feel like your voices aren't being heard, some of you will be seeing them featured on the top right of the screen. Really exciting stuff. Let's take an opportunity to transition and talk a little about their lineups. Now they have even more information than yesterday. Sometimes you saw one class being banned and then being revealed for the first time, but pretty much all information is out there. And it looks like we have Nick Slay banning Dr. Hippie's Mage, and Dr. Hippie is banning the Warrior away from Nick Slay. Mm -hmm. Which makes a lot of sense. Uh, we've seen that Nick Slay has a fairly fairly standard lineup with the, the Seeker Paladin and the Zulok, uh, which do tend to suffer against Freeze Mage. And Incidentally, we've actually seen Druid fall several times to Freeze Mage, despite yep. that being usually thought of as a very advantage matchup for Druid of the weekend. Sure, and there are some interesting dynamics to this lineup as well. How will the Hunter do? We mm -hmm. see Naaman go pretty far, and the only reason why Dr. Hippie isn't in the top four is because he had to go through Naaman himself. Is he one of the better players to not go through? Will Nick Slay make a run through the lower bracket of his group? I'm excited to see and get the series underway. 
Right, to me, Dr. Hippie's big X Factor is that Hunter deck. We saw it's not as straightforward as Naaman's. It doesn't have the Wolf Riders. It uses uh, minions like Haunted Creeper. They're a little bit slower, offer a little bit more board stability. So I think if Dr. Hippie's Hunter can pull out a win, he's in a really good spot here. Well, we will be seeing whether it can in this very first game. It is Dr. Hippie's Hunter against Nixley with the Druid. So here as as the hunter, uh, the key is putting on pressure early. That's usually the key as a hunter in a lot of <laughs> matchups. But in particular here, because Druid is capable of getting on the board with those big mid-range minions very quickly with things like Innervate and Wild Growth, you really need good, solid early game. Uh, the Animal Companion is actually one of the stronger cards sure. because making something like a Misha uh, is pretty difficult for the, the Druid to be able to actually handle with its removal spells. Yeah, especially if you're going first, because yeah. then you're going to be hitting three mana for Druid, and they have to, like, most of their best responses are probably around four mana for most of these mm -hmm. Animal Companion stuff, whether it's Wrath or Swipe. <laughs> uh, very complicated. And Dr. Hippie, this once is... again, <laughs> being a victim of Mulligans. He just keeps mulliganing Snake Trap and getting Snake Trap. Right. It's, it's more like the innkeeper you... saying, this is your card, <laughs> deal with it. It's like, no, 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 you put two Snake Trap in your deck, you're going to get one. Oh, but that's a great card off the top for Dr. Hippie there. Uh, the early pressure of that Leper Gnome making a big difference in how much damage he can get in, in the early turns. Nick Slay, though, he has that Living Roots, which is a great answer. I want to point out a little bit, Dr. Hippie, we've been billing him as kind of this reserved player who doesn't necessarily show a lot of emotion, but he opens up with the Greetings Traveler. He's been looking in Nick Slay's direction a lot. He's, Still is. Yeah, uh, just staring him down. Nick Slay, uh, just looking at his hand, trying not to make eye contact. And <laughs> wonder if Dr. Hippie's been kind of watching Nick Slay's matches and be like, how do you out emote the emoter? Well, we have to keep in mind, you know, Nick Slay, we, we've said how sort of expressive a player he is uh, throughout the course of the broadcast. And uh, as Nymphage said, you know, these two players are sitting right across from each other. They can look into each other's eyes and you can, you can read a lot from those faces that Nick Slay does make. I feel like I, I wouldn't be able to just because he makes faces to everything. <laughs> so it feels like, well, how do I know? Like sometimes he's even winning it's like, and he's like making faces as if a skunk is next door to him. And, <laughs> and it's not necessarily like, you know, the whole point is that Nick Slay is going through the process. He talks to himself a lot. And I think that's really important as a player. You see players like Strife Crow do this a lot, except Strife Crow doesn't furl his eyebrow every two seconds as well, which makes it really fun to watch Nick Slay. But I hope, uh, I mean, it looks like he's pretty calm right now. I think he's not really going through the, the range of, uh, of grievances that we usually see. <laughs> I was going to say, in tournaments, you tend to look for the clip that's going to make the nice gift that Disguised Toast eventually puts out. But with, with Nick Slay, where does Disguised Toast actually start? You just watch all of his matches in their entirety to find that perfect gift. You just so, have the full range of the, every every moment of Nick Slay on stage. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> So Nick actually had a lot of debate back and forth because I think he's also realizing that cards like Wild Growth can sit dead in his hand for a while because he has everything. He has all his early game outside of like Wrath, I think, would be the other card that would be independent of controlling the board. So now that he has Innervate and Coin, Kibler, and you're evaluating this, what do you think is best to develop here or, or even to prepare for the following turns? Well, uh, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe we've seen that Dr. Hippie's tra traps are those two stake traps and a explosive trap. Yes. Which makes innervating out a large minion a uh, much stronger play than it is against builds of Hunter that actually have freezing trap. So I think that you could realistically uh, try and get in the, just try and get in the board quickly, perhaps innervate out the Shredder. Um, you, you are facing out a bit of damage here from the Mad Scientist then, but uh, it looks like he is, in fact, going to go with exactly that play. Yeah, I think Shredder just feels like the most resilient minion on board, mm -hmm. even though it feels like Azure Drake is... I mean, it's, it's, it's a higher cost minion and Shredder is going to come on on four. The fact is having something stick on board is very powerful against Hunter, which is coming up on a turn three play, which board presence will ultimately really snowball your advantage as a Hunter. Yeah, Nixley may not have been able to, uh, may not be able to play those Azure Drakes particularly quickly from this point because he did play that that uh, Innervate, but it does mean that he's able to immediately answer whatever uh, of the uh, the companions comes out right here, uh, except okay. <laughs> the Leoc is able to take down that... Uh, oh. We well, actually saw Dr. Hippie pretty much roll nothing but Leox yeah. yesterday, and it was very unfortunate. It was not in situations where he wanted Leox, and he gets it this time, and it's it's finally a good time for Leox. And that's one of the best two-mana minions that can come out of a Shredder in terms of trading onto the board. Uh, although, Nick Slay is not sure if this is Snake Trap, which, of course, we know what trap it is, because we see Dr. Hippie, the Snake Charmer himself, uh, hold both of those Snake Traps. The Snake Trap and, and, and Doc Leok. That's what he's got right there. That's right. 
Well, uh, I mean, if you're looking at Nick's position, I, I don't really hate the coin wild growth. You go into five mana, and that allows you to play Azure Drake. Other than that, um, it, it's really good to get the wild growth out of your hand, so that way you're not just pigeoned hole by that coin and just like you can't really find an application for it. So I like it. I think that uh, Leoc role, the more I'm looking at this board, was actually incredibly important for Dr. Hippie because as a hunter player who's not playing a straight face hunter variant, uh, you can really quickly get behind against or on the board against the Druid player. And then you're pretty much trying to address that and you're constantly leading up to that turn nine where the Druid just combos you out of the game mm -hmm. uh, with Savage or Force of Nature. So I think Dr. Hippie getting Leoc was really good especially uh, since Nixley had to coin out that wild growth. And now Nixley's board is not that intimidating. Well, I mean, this is definitely a, a pretty bad spot, I think, for Dr. Hippie here. He he really needs to, as we were saying earlier, get that early pressure in. And it's turn four, and he has nothing in play. Right. He has two traps, but that's, you know, explosive and snake trap. He will be able to uh, clear off this, uh, this uh, minibot if it does attack, but he doesn't have any actual pressure himself besides his hero power. So Nick right. does choose to play that Azure Drake and not attack, which is a little unusual to me. Uh, I, I would have suspected he would want to break the explosive trap while Dr. Hippie has neither a uh, Eaglehorn bow or Nick has developed additional minions to get damaged by it. Yeah, it, it is interesting, but I think Nick just wants to use the mini bot to activate the snake trap first, and then benefit off of the Drake's swipe with the hero. Uh, sorry, with the spell power as well. Um, but I, I do think that is interesting. It's a very conservative play, and one thing you do have to worry about, Hunter, is how you're going to ultimately win as Druid because they will they will drain you down. And of course, Dr. Hippie, with a little bit of unfortunate sequencing of draws, he's getting his Mad Scientist, which will most likely grab zero value unless he's surprising with the fourth trap here. Not looking like it's going to pull that out, so. Yeah, so perhaps Nick Slay was hoping that Dr. Hippie would play something he could attack that minibot into, then use the swipe to clear out the snake trap. Uh, he realizes that, you know, it looks like Dr. Hippie doesn't really have much in the way of minions to play, mm -hmm. so just decides to start getting the pressure on. But I think it, ultimately it's still okay for Nick Slay, despite the fact that he doesn't have to use a swipe, because then if his opponent plays the Unleash the Hounds or anything else, I mean, the swipe being five damage to face, is also really powerful if you want to end the game. Yeah, it's it's imperative that the Druid does take it upon themselves to actually end the game because that steady shot, it's adding up. Nick Slay's already down to 17. Uh, Dr. Hippie does have kill command to pick up things like uh, quick shot, so... Ooh. Yeah, but I think now that you know Snake Trap's out there and you have two swipes... I, I mean, I, I might be jumping to conclusions here, Rob, but I'm definitely feeling like that's that's something yeah. that you want to be looking at. Those swipes are looking pretty juicy in the immediate future to uh, set up this board. Looks like he's thinking that Druid of the Claw might be the answer. And Druid of the Claw is a very uh, powerful minion in general, but especially against Hunter, it usually takes so many resources to get through. You've already seen one owl from Dr. Hippie. You probably feel pretty safe behind that wall. and. Uh, Dr. Hippie is definitely looking at an uphill battle, especially with what's in his hand. That second Snake Trap being a dead card. Yeah, it makes sense, too, uh, given the context of the mana usage. Something I wasn't paying attention to is that he'll be on 8 next turn. He can actually double swipe the face yeah. and just end the game if his opponent can't get past this Druid of the Claw. So that also is an option that Nick Slay is setting up for. And, you know, according to a lot of players, especially if you look at World Champion or ex-World Champion Firebat, he would always say with, with classes like Druid, you always want to try to set up for two turn lethals as much as you can. Yeah, it's, it's very important to get, to get your uh, your clock on as well as you can here. But uh, Dr. Hippie forced to use his kill command defensively. Well, sort of offensively. It is a taunt that he's getting through. Uh, and here, uh, Dr. Hippie is going to bust through that. And we're going to see, ooh, is, is he just going to push face? I think at this point, you probably have to. Looking at the situation, you have a dead card in hand. He does take out the, the Azure Drake, which is key. Because if he didn't kill that Azure Drake, right. he would be dead this turn. Important consideration, that swipe, well, both of those swipes. Probably about to do some serious work here. Yeah, I, th I think you have the flexibility of developing the big game hunter as well to get that extra damage in. But I guess if the Druid the Claw survives again, you're still fine. It, it, it's still one of these situations where you're feeling very comfortable. Your opponent most likely can't do 15 damage with two cards in a hero power. But I, I've been wrong about stuff like uh, that in the past. You are not wrong here, as okay. Dr. Hippie Dr. 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 concedes. Yep. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nick Slay. With the, with the greetings right at the end. I like it. I like it.
I feeling like vindicated because he knows that Hunter can be a tricky matchup. He's also well aware of cards like Hunter's Mark in that deck, which can absolutely blow out this Druid matchup. You see cards like Druid the Claw die to a 1-1 token. All of a sudden, you have no answer for the board. So a huge win here for Nick Slay. Well, that Druid matchup is, in fact, the reason, really, that you play Hunter's Mark uh, in the, the Hunter's deck. You're not really looking for it against a deck like Warlock. It's, it's pretty good against Mysterious Challenger out of Secret Paladin, but not all that much else. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think uh, Dr. Hippie's not happy. I mean, you're never happy losing games in the series, but specifically with this matchup, I, he wanted more. It's not out of the question, though, if he can come back into this series. Uh, I think you're looking at the lineups. There's still a lot of ways he can mix and match, but I definitely feel a lot better if I'm in Camp Nixley. Yeah, I mean, the, the Druid out of Nixley, I think, is one that... Uh Dr. Hibby sort of expects is, is likely to be able to pick up a win, and his Hunter deck still has two good matchups remaining, I believe. So I think he's, he's still in a reasonable spot. I mean, I think they're good matchups on paper, but again, I, I just am not super high on Dr. Hippie's Hunter deck and the way it's constructed. Uh, I feel like I haven't really seen too many good results out of this build of Hunter. I, I, know it's, I don't want to say like the Hunter uh, expert here, but I really like Naaman's version so much better. The more aggressive line, just go face, do the damage. We've seen Snake Trap be a Really non-factor in this tournament thus far, I feel like. The second Snake Trap has punished uh, Dr. Hibby a number of times already. So. Yeah, it's true. However, uh, in this case, he's going to have to look to climb back. And we had a chance to talk to Dr. Hippie, too, both about just how they're feeling with their decks and matches uh, about their opponents. Let's see what they had to say about each other before we go into game number two. The <laughs> I'm happy I made it to tomorrow. I'm also happy I played. I think I played well today. I wasn't happy about my performance yesterday. Hey, that will yeah. do it. Yeah, Nick Slay is going to go ahead and complete the sweep. He is going to advance not to the top four, but he is going to stay alive to play again tomorrow. I only prepared for this match, and I'll have to start preparing for Dr. Hippie now. I'll go and see the game. Nick Slay is against I will not guess that you will win Nick so that I will win up with you better than against Cereza. It will be a tough match. I think it will go to five games and I hope I will make it. Thank you guys for watching me and I am glad that I got to show you guys a better performance today than yesterday. And I hope I will keep doing well. You're doing great, Nick Slay. Don't worry. Just keep doing you. Because it's working out so far. He's up 1 0 uh, over Dr. Hippie, who started off with his Hunter deck, which has been, just been shaky. And, you know, you feel like you can easily chalk it up to drawing awkwardly, but he, that's the reason why playing two snake traps can be awkward. It's like, well, you sometimes do draw it. In this case, he drew it two games in a row. Yeah, I mean, the situational cards like Snake Trap, like that Hunter's Mark, those are mm -hmm. cards that, that can make your draws clunky, that can contribute to you not having that focused aggression that you need. Yeah, precisely. And he, he wouldn't be the first player, even within the Europe top eight, uh, to be a victim of that. Sometimes people fit their decks, like Reno Warlock, with too many tech yeah. cards, and all of a sudden just has my control tech, Kazan Mystic, Big Game Hunter, and Harrison Jones. You're like, well, I actually don't have any quality things to do this turn. Uh, and, and that's one of the, the, the the, the problems that you can run into if you have too many of these weird outlying factors. Um, we'll see if he ends up going for it. Game two is still up in the air. It's Conquest, so he just win with any deck, but it is blind pick. So if he pivots to a Warlock, or maybe if he wants to switch to his Paladin, it's completely up to what Dr. Hippie wants to do. Yeah, I agree here. I think Dr. Hippie is probably going to stick with that Hunter deck at this point. Go ahead and try to get that win with it. But it is Conquest, so again, trying to necessarily predict exactly what someone's going to do in this situation isn't sure. super productive. But we do see here he is going to stick with that Hunter, and Nick Slay is going to queue up the Paladin. This is a pretty excellent opening uh, with the double Haunted Creeper here, uh, giving Nick Slay the ability to potentially deal with uh, a lot of the early threats that, that the Hunter deck can put out and stop the bleeding early. Yeah, definitely. Haunted Creeper is one of the best anti-aggro board control cards. Uh, most of the things early on have one health. We're looking at Leper Gnomes, uh, you're looking at Abusive Sergeants. All those cards that you, you sometimes see on turn one uh, can trade well into it. Not to mention that um, it's, it gives you more minions to stick to the board for cards like Blessing of King. So even if the Haunted Creeper dies or 1-1 one -one tokens become 5-5s, five and then you can pressure to maybe even win the game against Hunter. Right, with Seeker Paladin, obviously they have a very dominating early game. Get out those Haunted Creeper minions, get out uh, the Seeker Keepers. Things just clog up the board, shielded minibots. So as a hunter in this situation, this is a matchup I I've queued into a lot as a hunter player. And 
Uh, there's basically a point where you look at the board and you're like, there's no way I'm going to fight back onto this. And then you unleash the hounds <laughs> for four to five and you just start hitting them in the face. That's There's no way the hunter can go toe to toe in terms of board control against a secret paladin that I've seen. No, that, well, that's, that's actually, I think, the reason that hunter is typically also fairly favored in this matchup because they are able to pivot and just go face. And secret paladin, generally speaking, doesn't have very many defensive measures. Yeah, outside of dropping things like Noble Sacrifice, which mm -hmm. can easily be navigated through if they have a single weapon. Uh, Dr. Ivy once again drawing the Snake Trap. He is the Snake Charmer. I don't, I, don't, I can't really quite explain it, but well, th this it's is actually maybe... a matchup. Yeah. Well, this is actually a matchup where, where, where the Snake Trap is actually quite good. Yeah. It, it, it does, uh, because the Secret Paladin is relying on attacking your minions with their own minions in order to gain control of the board, uh, I wouldn't even be surprised if Dr. Hibby just chose to play it right now. Yeah, you get three. It's kind of like a muster for battle to answer what the muster for battle could do on their turn. You well, set it three one-one snakes, and then all of a sudden, uh, Nick Slay says, "Do I end up trading to this? Do I get punished for doing it?" Definitely expect Nick Slay to think about this turn for a little bit before he makes an action. Probably make some faces as well. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he makes some faces. Uh, as the hunter player, you're still in a position right now where you can dictate pace through the use of that snake trap. But if you see things like Blessing of Kings or Turn 6 Mysterious Challenger, that's where the Secret Paladin can ramp up the damage and race you pretty quickly. But Dr. Hippie's in a really good spot right now and is probably going to force a trade or Nick Slay might just think it's Explosive Trap and try to work around that. He did just attack face. I think he's, I think Nick Slay very mm. well may just go with uh, Noble Sacrifice Avenge here because that really impedes Dr. Hippie's ability to attack the face without actually giving Nick Slay a, a huge threat himself. That's a, that's a good point. Not to mention that if Dr. Hippie chooses to just go really aggressive, he actually has a reasonable minion to fight back. And then Muster for Battle the following turn can also ensure board control moving forward. So I do like that. And, and the haunted, second Haunted Creeper just feels a little bit too weak relative to this kind of play. Right, so two secrets on the board there for Nick Slay. Dr. Hippie has the weapons, he has the Haunted Creeper. In most situations, you do want to get that Eagle Horn Bow developed, start putting in the damage, and he's going to go ahead and test for the secret. Uh, probably going to be disappointed to see Noble Sacrifice, but not necessarily surprised. So the uh, the get down does get triggered, and Avenge will go on that spider, and it's now the biggest thing on board by a lot. Yeah, and at this point, I don't think Doctor Hippie will even bother acknowledging that spider. If you if Nick Slay just continues to ignore the Leper Gnome, that Leper Gnome is just going to squeeze in more damage. Uh, eventually, until he gets cards like Consecration, Nick Slay can't avoid addressing the board without that card. Right well, at this point. Right now, there is still a snake trap, which Nick Slay knows about in the board. So I right. imagine we're actually just going to see a yep. bunch of attacking of face by both players. That's what I'm saying. Dr. Hippie early on could dictate the pace of this. Nick Slay knows what secret that is. He has the bigger board. He's just going to race him and force something like an Unleash the Hounds or an Explosive Trap to come out. Or else uh, Dr. Hippie is in, an, once again, a really bad spot with his Hunter deck. It's interesting because Dr. Hippie, does he feel like he's in a position to also race? Uh, if he knows his opponent is not going to acknowledge the board, does he hit with the weapon, re like equip Glaive Zuka, and just like, all right, I'm going to try to race you because I have the Hunter Hero power. I have cards like Arcane Golem. You can't actually do anything to it. it it'll be interesting to see how he's weighing his decisions. Well, the, the thing is, from this for, at this point, I don't see Dr. Hibby as having any other choice. He doesn't really have the tools to fight back for this board in any way, and he really has to just go for a race this board. Yeah, his only board control tool, and I'm putting that in quotation marks, is Hunter, Hunter's Mark, but even then, Hunter's Mark still creates more 1-1 one -one tokens and complicates things. It's going to be useful for th cards like Sludge Belcher. I was going to say, that Sludge Belcher is actually a very big draw from Nick Slay. We were talking about how the Secret Paladin deck typically does not have much in the way of defensive measures. That's pretty much it. And it's not necessarily a card that often shows up in Secret Paladin decks, uh, but Nick Slay uh, must have been thinking about potentially playing against a more aggressive metagame. He does decide, now that the Eagle Horn Bow is gone, to trigger that Snake Trap. He has those recruits to clear them off. So now the board is going to be just his four attack minion against the one attack minion on the different Hippie side. Right, this isn't quite Shredder into Sludge Belcher into Mysterious Challenger, but it's pretty good all the same, having <laughs> Shielded Minibot, second Haunted Creeper, into that Sludge Belcher next turn in the Mysterious Challenger follow-up. Uh, Kill Command is giving Dr. Hippie potentially significant amount of damage here. If he wanted to, he could go with that Golem right now. The problem with that is that he is ramping Nick Slay into six mana, which is that, that key point for the Mysterious Challenger. 
If he goes for the Arcane Golem now, I think it's important to get it before like a Noble Sacrifice number two comes out, so that way he can get maximum damage. However, if he goes for Kill Command, he still keeps that Arcane Golem as an opportunity, and he gets the synergy guaranteed off the Beast, yeah. which is the hardest thing to guarantee sometimes. So he ends up doing this instead, putting down a seven. But Nick Slate behind that Sludge Belcher is going to be feeling pretty safe here. Yeah. And this Sludge Belcher, as, as I was just mentioning, is huge here. It, it prevents Dr. Hippie without any additional uh, draw of something like a uh, an Iron Beak Owl from being able to actually get any more minion or attack damage on Dr. Uh, or rather on Nick Slay, uh, who currently doesn't quite have the ability to kill Dr. Hippie in two turns, uh, but think. isn't far off. Mm -hmm. I have to assume this Haunted Creeper for Dr. Hippie does get traded out because if Kill Command were to come off the top for Dr. Hippie with the hero power, that would be game if Haunted Creeper remains on the board. Actually, I do Maybe. think because Nick Slay has the Keeper Voldemort, he might actually just have enough because he's going to do eight damage to face assuming Let he goes for it. Oh, he's going to trade into the Beast. That gives up a lot of the damage. And that, that makes sense if you want to play around the second Kill Command or any kind of Beast synergy. Move quickly. He's anticipating the Sludge Belcher will live and he's be able to get that damage in. Mm -hmm. Dr. Hippie does have a very convenient Hunter's Mark. And he's got, he's got it. Oh, quick shot. Yeah, so yep. th this is actually going to be uh, not quite. Is it? Is this it is. Yep. So you put the weapon it should into... should be just enough yep, because the, he's going to be able to get the weapon through it. It's going to be seven and just enough the mana as well. Yep. He's going to have one left over. What a crazy close game. Yeah. Oh, he didn't, he didn't even need the quick shot. He still the, oh, the, the, the one spider's going to attack. I wanted the BM, <laughs> but uh, it doesn't really matter here. Nick Slay really disappointed he wasn't able to go with 2-0 and a crucial win for Dr. Hippie. And that game really did highlight how the Secret Paladin deck, despite having this dominating board, just isn't able to deal with that direct damage. You know, we did see the kill command, the... Uh, the hero power just whittled down Nick Slay until he just had no life left. Right, Dr. Hippie did not play around Hunter's Mark at all. It might have been something that just wasn't on his mind. He's just thinking, I need to deal with this kill command potential and the hero power combination, but I don't necessarily need to. I don't know there was really a way for him to play around a Hunter's Mark at that point. He still needs right. to, I mean, he also needs to play around just hero power twice, kill right. you. Drawing quick shots, right. stuff like there's, that. There's, there's any number of things that he can't beat over the course of a couple of yeah. turns. So he needs to try and present lethal as quickly as possible. I agree with that. Yeah, I think when he says, what's more likely for him to have in his hand that he can't play? Something like a Silence or more Burn? Or is he more likely to have the Hunter's Mark? And you know that there's a lot of Chargers and Burn in the deck. So you play more around the Burn than the likelihood of him having a one-off Hunter's Mark, which is the case here. So I definitely don't disagree with what Nick Slay was going for. Uh, in the meantime, Dr. Hippie gets a really crucial win and gets on the board, sending it to effectively a best of three conquest now from a best of five. Uh, we had an opportunity to sit down with Dr. Hippie before the tournament started to get to know him a little bit better. However, did we get to know him a little bit better? We're not exactly sure. Um, I haven't uh, talked that much to Dr. Hippie. Yeah, when it comes to Dr. Hippie, I don't know much about him. He likes to keep to himself. There are many players of whom you don't know much. There is no, there is no much information. Uh, he is kind of a lone wolf. I don't know too much about Dr. Hippie as a person, but I know that he's one of the best freeze mages in the world, if not the best. The first thing you find about Dr. Hippie on the internet when you look him up is his freeze mage and how fast he climbed with it in January. But other than that, he's a pretty unknown player. Это мой второй второй турнир. Я чувствую себя спокойно, не нервничаю. Просто хочу получить удовольствие от игры. Для меня это новый опыт, новая страна. Я никогда раньше не был в Америке. Новые знакомства. Это довольно весело. Dr. Hippie doesn't talk as much as the other players, so he's a mysterious challenger to me. Who am I? None of your business. None of my business. Well, it kind of is my business to get to know Dr. Hippie a little bit better, as at least we're trying to present information about it. <laughs> it seems like uh, at this point, Dr. Hippie, I, I agree with what he's saying. He doesn't really look nervous to me. I think he's been really calm. And, and, and again, uh, 
it, it, you can definitely tell some of the players in general have been reacting to the stakes getting higher, but I, I've still been pretty impressed with how Dr. Hippie's been playing. Maybe we can disagree with how he builds decks. You know, maybe we don't feel like the, the snake traps were ultimately a good call, whether or not you can say for the metagame or for the top eight. But uh, regardless, I'm really happy with how he's been using the cards that he's been drawing. Well, snake trap was certainly great in that game. You know, yeah. As yeah. you were saying, that it's per perhaps he was particularly trying to target the, the secret paladin decks because they do rely so much on their minions for removal. And uh, it certainly worked for all from there. Yeah, and, and, and the Hunter got the win, which is the most important thing. I mean, at this point, you could argue theoretically what's correct, but results is what you really want today. Yeah. Maybe when you're laddering hundreds of games for top one in Legend, you can make those tweaks for optimization. But all the kitty gloves comes off here, Rob. Wow. All over the top. How eight. many of them are there? All four. <laughs> All that matters, I agree, Too Dan, <laughs> is the W. That's really all you're looking for there. Yeah. I keep my kitty boots on, though, because I want to look fabulous. He is, in fact, wearing kitty boots. I just looked down. This is, uh, I, I didn't notice them before. Rob, I don't think you're in a position to be making fun of my fashion sense. Whoa! Vests are not as cool as bow ties, but they're still pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm glad. I, you look you look splendid, Rob. Love the checkered kitchen stuff Yeah, that you're thanks. I'm today. actually trying out for Mumford and Sons <laughs> after this, so I'm, uh, yeah. I'm ready to go. Just have to work on your voice and you're good to go, man. Ooh, tr wow. believe me, I have tried. <laughs> I've tried. I've got some feedback about that before. No worries, man. I think uh, everything has been good so far. We're starting off the day excellently, and both these players looking to grab a crucial Game 3 victory. We have Zoo versus uh, a Zoo, and there I, I, have we seen a lot of noticeable differences? There are both very token-esque approach. You have Gormok the Impaler trying to get four minions and getting that tempo, and you have Sea Giant trying to really flood the board. Um, when, you, when you're looking at this kind of matchup, Chabler, what are some of the most important cards for the opening mulligans here? Uh, well, cards like the Imp Gang boss we do see in Dr. Hippie's hand. Uh, anything that is able to present a, a large minion threat that isn't easily able to remove by, by the opposing board. Uh, things like, we do see uh, Nyx like Heap, that Argent Squire, it's important to have that early pressure. Uh, and in the, as you get to the mid game, cards like Implosion become important, but it's more important to have a good opening curve than those cards for the mid game. Right, both players actually do have that good opening curve. Uh, a lot of early minions to play, not super surprising. That's the name of the game with this deck is just flood the board early on. One thing I do like in the Zoo Mirror match that I think is interesting is Sea Giant, right? It's one of those things where obviously you want to have more minions on the board, get the discount. Uh, as the Zoo player, when you don't see Sea Giant in your hand, it's always in the back of your mind. You're, I got to play minions. That's how I win this game. But I really hope my opponent does not have a Sea Giant, which we do see in Dr. Hippie's hand. Yeah, it is one of the more important cards in this sort of board flood style version of, uh, of Aggressive Warlock. This has been the style of the deck that has become more and more popular. We used to see uh, for a while the Void Collar Doom Guard versions, uh, but the the Sea Giant versions that tend to use Leroy Jenkins as their their charge finisher have uh, mm -hmm. really gotten more popular recently. And there's oh. Leroy Jenkins. There it is. As, as if on cue. I was gonna say, as a caster, <laughs> whenever has spoken, what's happening? Can you, can you tell me what's the weather like next week here when I go to the park? Uh, well, it's gonna be sunny. We're in California. Oh, thank you. <laughs> a bold prediction. <laughs> uh, you know. Dr. Hippie had a really tough turn one that he had to evaluate. I, I think people, now they see Knife Struggler, they use the confirmation bias. Well, that makes the most sense. But when you have an Argent Squire, you're very afraid that it can get a high value of trade up. Uh, and Dr. Hippie evaluating his thing, saying, you know what? I have Abusive Sergeant. I don't want to really play it early on and compromise my Nerubi Neg being activated. Uh, and I'm just going to use a Knife Struggler because it's my best ability, if he can't punish it, to get value off of it when I play a minion and get a juggle. All right, we see here he is not going to be able to punish it. Could have used the Iron Beak Owl to potentially silence it, but there are a lot better targets in this matchup for that Iron Beak Owl. Like that Nerubian Egg. Nerubian sure. Egg is one of the key, uh, one of the key minions uh, in this matchup because it is able to get a significant board presence ahead of schedule. Uh, there we do see Dr. Hibby pick up that Haunted Creeper. It's not really the order you want things in with the Haunted Creeper and Knife Jugger. You'd much rather have the Haunted Creeper on board than play the Knife Jugger and be able to attack the Creeper in and get those juggles. Sure. But he's getting a shot here. Oh. That was what he wanted to hit. He did want to get the juggle on the Divine Shield, so he is able to clear off uh, the Squire without losing his Knife Juggler. Yep. Uh, that Knife Juggler used to practice a lot in the Overwatch beta. That's why his <laughs> aim is really good. Rob, Rob's shaking his head. What character I, does he play? Do, do you, I guess Rob's not even in the Overwatch beta. I feel really bad for I you. I just want to get into it, man. I hear it's a really <laughs> fun game. I don't. It's really hard to get into uh, that. Wow, Blizzard's really cruel sometimes, even to their own. You know, M Gang Boss is so powerful on a board like this because these Haunted Creepers spawn more 1 1 tokens, and then it becomes really threatening when you are able to out trade your opponent, uh, especially with a deck like Zoo that has so many buffs. Yeah. 
that that makes the, the player who's ahead even like marginally on board with the ability to attack uh, in generally a much better position. If, for instance, Nick Slay had an abusive sergeant here, he'd be able to just take out his opponent's, uh, yeah. his opponent's imp gang boss and be in a much better situation. Uh, the, the buffs in Zoo are what make it so strong as mid-range minion decks. Uh, people talk about how Zoo is so advantaged against Druid, and that's really because of those things like Abusive Sergeant, like Power of Whelming. They can use their little minions to take out big things on the other side. Right. And the trade that you get with Nerubian Eggs even replaces it with the stronger minion, a four for Nerubian. Uh, Nick Slay also picked up second Imp Gang boss. However, I think he's also weighing his options like, you know, how do I deal with that opponent's board? Do I want to use the Owl now? If I don't, if I play Imp Gang boss number two, will I get punished by like Defender of Argus and really get completely, you know, wrecked by this fact that my, his board is going to be super strong trading against mine? Right, there's kind of two different ways you can approach using the Owl in this matchup, I feel like, and it's denying your opponent minions off something like a Haunted Creeper or, or an Imp Gang Boss, or getting through Defender of Argus. There isn't really too much else to do with that Owl, so looks like he's thinking Imp Gang Boss, Leper Gnome. I would have also liked the Iron Beak Owl and the Rubian Egg, but both plays feel reasonably solid to me. Obviously represents a lot more power with this play. Ooh. Interesting attack. Um, when, when you attack the face, he clearly didn't want to create more minions on the board to enable Dr. Hippie to do stuff. But he is leaving. It, it's interesting. Actually, when you kind of evaluate it, what do you think about that attack to the face killer? Uh, well, there, there are, like we said, a number of things you need to keep in mind, particularly that sea giant. Right. Uh, Dr. Hippie now has the ability to, to, to govern attacks, but if he had attacked the creeper, then Dr. Hippie would have those minions in play and have the ability to attack with them in the same turn. Mm -hmm. So here, Dr. Hippie can potentially attack uh, into the uh, the Leper Gnome, clear that, right. and keep the same number of minions in play. Now, he's able, a, yeah, now he's actually able to uh, create additional minions through this and can actually drop pretty close to everything, I think. Right, I think the because he can create one additional minion, this, wait, hold uh, on. No, he he, I think he. I think, I he, think he thought he had more board yeah, space. Yeah, no, he, he actually was now. Yeah, he just, because. Yeah. Oh I think, my goodness. Ooh, that's that's definitely a little bit of a misstep that Doctor Hippie recognized there. Uh, if he had played the the giant, he could have played the giant if he had, if he had sequenced that a little bit differently. Yeah. Uh, and he he ended up playing in a Ruby Egg that really doesn't get him much uh, immediately on the board here. So uh, this could be a, a pretty big swing in this game where Dr. Hippie could have had a huge advantage. Right, because, you know, part of the reason why Nick Slay didn't even attack is because he knew he can't answer a giant very easily. Um, not only did Dr. Hippie not play a Sea Giant, but he also flooded his board too much, so cards like him King Boss won't even get additional value. So this is an opportunity for the, the board to swing slightly, but I mean, Dr. Hippie still has a great turn coming up. Yeah, Nick Slay, if he had a, a Sea Giant here, could have taken huge advantage of that. It's also worth noting that Dr. Hippie, with that emote, that was a mistake, really signaled right. that he had Sea Giant in his hand. <laughs> it was as if he wanted to tell the audience that, no, 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 I realize I messed up, but he gave away information by doing so. I was going to say, matter? that was very uncharacteristic or uncharacteristic of what we've seen of Dr. Hippie to have that visceral emotion or yeah. visceral reaction to what he did there. Uh, misplay, yes, but he's still in a really solid spot here. Going to be able to play Sea Giant and Gormok the Impaler, yeah. Impaler on the same turn. Clear out that Nerubian. Completely crushing it. Nick Slay realizes that this game is probably just done unless he draws something miraculous. Well, Implosion can be a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's enough here, but... Well, even if you roll four yeah. and just immediately take out Gormok, you're still in a really bad spot. Yeah, there's still there's still that, that giant in play. Oh, man. Not enough man to even use five mana worth of stuff here. You're only stuck with four. If you implosion, and you implosion high, you're still not even trading evenly across everything on the board with all the small one ones and divine shields. And so the Sea Giant will be putting you on a clock. And the big thing in this matchup is if you're able to lower your opponent's health pool, you reduce the number of life taps that they're able to use. And then you're the, they're the ones forced to trade while you can go really aggressive and just ignore their means. Yeah, Nick Slay, not a lot of great options here. He, he can't even attack through that Voidwalker uh, with his Imp Gang boss in play. He's just going to go for the Hail Mary oh. on the implosion. It is a that's Three. close, but not quite enough. Yeah, but many people also got close to winning elections, and we don't even really remember them in History Killers. The, the winner <laughs> is the one who's remembered, true. and it looks like Dr. Hippie is the one who's going to be closing it out soon, unless Nick Slay can also draw something to, to counter it. Well, his life, Dr. Hippie's life total is getting 
relatively low. He's in the he's in the twenties here. He may need to use some of this board to clear off Nick Slay's board, both to preserve his own life total so he doesn't somehow die to that uh, Leroy so Jenkins with buffs. Right, it's a little bit tempting to maybe just go face with everything since you have so much damage on the board, but uh, I think the correct play here is, and it looks like Dr. Hippie agrees to do some trading just to make sure there's no potential for a comeback. He has power overwhelming in hand for next turn, so could set him up here for that two-turn lethal. Dr. Hippie's draws there are a little, a little interesting. The power overwhelming and then the not very often seen big game hunter, which is obviously great against opposing sea giants, but you can't even play when you have your own sea giant on the board. Yeah, uh, you have to target something. So you're right. It, it, he has to hold on to the big game hunter or hope his opponent plays a sea giant so that way he can get his uh, big game hunter to tempo onto the board. Uh, Nick Slay having Defender of Argus is a pretty big moment to swing. It's not over till it's over. And we, we've seen Zoo be one of the more swingy matches when you have cards like Implosions and Sea Giants. Right, and he will be able to remove that Voidwalker as well as Gormok, so it's yeah. really just that 8-8 eight, eight that is going to be giving him the problems, but with those two taunts, uh, I agree, there is potential, it looks like, for a little bit of a swing here. Yeah, look, because, because of those sort of low-impact draws from Dr. Hippie last turn, this game is not this game is not over. Nope. We uh, see Dr. Hippie is able to get in a significant amount of pr uh, pressure this turn, whoa. and ooh, Defender of Argus from Dr. Hippie, though. That is definitely a, uh, a really big draw here, allowing him to suddenly be able to reduce the pressure from Nick Slay. Yeah, that's a man's, that's a man's draw right there. <laughs> wow. When it, when it counts the most, that Dr. is a Hippie. That's a grown draw. man, grown man draw. <laughs> Dan, I agree. I that's right. And I mean, he also can squeeze in life tap too to see if he can pick up another efficient minion for, I guess, anywhere between one to three mana. It depends on how he wants to do the trades. If he wants to use Power Overwhelming to trade into the inevitable Nerubian. Oh, a second, second defender's not quite as good. Uh, doesn't give him an additional play this turn. Well, yeah, one thing to note too is the interesting positioning of how everything worked out. I think he'd ideally like to uh, make sure that cards like the Sea Giant would also be taunted, but I think in this case it's also decent because his opponent has to pick up some weird trades first, and he gets value off of a 0-2 minion that didn't do anything otherwise. Power overwhelming in the hand of Dr. Hippie could be the difference maker, that, but... That we could be lethal if he picks up right. a power overwhelming or soul fire. And Smoma there does have yeah. that Leroy. Uh, we, we see that would be Nick exactly is, lethal. Yeah, no, Nick Slay is shaking his head. I'm, I'm, we don't see the uh, discover on the screen, but I'm guessing probably no four damage spell there. Probably just Blood Imp. Uh. <laughs> blood Imp, Angry Chicken, and Hungry Crab. Yep. That's usually... Uh, that's what I see. That, that's usually my, my first card that I get in Arena <laughs> as, a, as a choice. But the second thing is that in this case, none of those things that usually have board control options are very good. Even Voidwalker is not bad in this scenario because mm -hmm. you really put a, an obstacle in the way of the Sea Giant. I think Nixley probably also has cards like maybe even Flame In, which is hard to evaluate if you want or not. Just a simple Argent Squire. Would you, tr would you play Leroy to stop the Sea Giant at all here? You could play the Leroy here. You do lose a lot of your burst, but I, I, yeah, I think that, that getting the eight power minion off the board is probably worth it. He does technically have the better board at the end of this turn, and yeah. a lot of times with Zoo, it just kind of comes down to that. Mm -hmm. well, well, that could change very rapidly. <laughs> the implosion from Dr. Hippie picked up. He can potentially implosion and defender this turn, but he doesn't have great defender options, just the one ones that are facing a board full of tutus. Which might just make him go aggressive onto the uh, like onto his opponent. Remember, you're reducing the number of life taps that he can do. We've seen Doctor Hippie with a lot of two implosions. A lot. Yeah. Of them. <laughs> the two implosions are not great at all to end the game. Now Nick Slay with the Sea Giant, but Doctor Hippie does have that big game hunter that's been waiting in his hand. You're right. So Nick Slay is probably happy to see that. Although there is six eight damage, it's going to eliminate at least one of these. And Dr. Hippie is uh, going to also eliminate the big game hunter, or sorry, the sea giant with that big game hunter, it looks like, and that's not going to be a welcome sight for Nick Slay. Wow, such a swingy back and forth because of you're able to eliminate the minions. Dr. Hippie also could life tap again into damage to end the game. Uh, looks like Dr. Hippie is signaling for uh, for something here. This might be, might be a bit of a technical issue. Okay, uh, we're going to check in with the admin and see what's happened. In the meantime, though, uh, you know, Dr. Hippie doesn't have the clear win yet. He had four damage on board plus four damage in hand. His opponent at 12. So if he was able to get uh, a power overwhelming or obviously with...
to enable it with Dark Peddler. Uh, very, very close to winning. And such, a, such an important moment, too, because from that point on, Nick, Nick Slate was out of cards, and he pretty much would lose the board at that point. Uh, and he would, and he lost his Leroy Jenkins. So it feels like from that position, I would definitely feel like Dr. Hibby's in a really good position. Be yeah, favored. certainly. Uh, it's, it's interesting that that was a game where, you know, if, if Dr. Hibby hadn't made that slight misstep with his, uh, his Sea Giant earlier on, he very likely was sort of an insurmountable advantage getting so much damage in quickly. But uh, the game did, did reach the point where it was actually pretty, you know, very, very close for quite a while. I was going to say, to the naked eye, that misplay or that misstep in sequencing might not have necessarily looked that big. You're just thinking, oh, he has so much raw power on board anyway. But uh, those small things in the zoom mirror absolutely add up. Well, playing an 8 or not is not really a small thing. That's fair. A big fair. Thing. He did still have a pretty good board at the time, though. Yeah, he did. He sure. definitely was could have still... had a way better board, though. <laughs> he definitely could have. But uh, that's, I mean, counting exactly, okay, well, what can I play with the Sea Giant? In a moment like this can definitely be something that you sort of don't quite get through in your head. And I think what was actually going on was was he may have thought, okay, I attack my, my Creeper in, and I'll make another guy when it actually keeps the, the, the count the same. Because two minions leave the Creeper and the, the uh, right. Leper Gnome, and it only leaves the two uh, Spectral Spiders off there. Yeah, right. I think another problem, too, is the board is too full. Mm -hmm. So even if he had the right mana cost, say that Sea Giant was zero, he yeah. still had ze he had, he's had no room on the board, too. Right. So there was a lot of like layers to what he probably thought. He probably was like, oh, maybe I can squeeze this minion in because it reduces the count. One of the things that when players are first playing Sea Giant think, oh, it's, it's three now, I'll just play it for three. But you can play what other one mana make, minion, make it two, mm -hmm. et cetera, and, and reduce the cost. That's what makes it such a swingy and dynamic card. So uh, I think um, we're, we're going to get a ruling really quick on what's happening. I think my, my guess is that it might have been an actual disconnect hmm. from uh, from Dr. Hippie, who was unable to play his cards in time. Uh, we're going to figure out what's going on. But in the meantime, I, we highly encourage you guys to get on social media and just get in the opportunity to just discuss what's fi what you guys like about the games, what you guys are rooting for players. I think people were really pushing for Nick Slay. He won over the hearts of many of the players or the people watching just because he's so fun to, to see his expressions on screen. You can see he was in good positions, bad positions, but he still makes those damn games. <laughs> right. I was going to say, uh, Twitch chat, watching at home, obviously, uh, Nick Slate being the living incarnation of Twitch chat just in this whole area, <laughs> I would assume makes them very close to all of their hearts. So. Sure, sure, makes sense. Uh, looks like we got the information that we're going to just replay game number three here. I, I believe it's just going to be Warlock versus Warlock again, so no surprise. You can't just switch, and all of a sudden, like, oh, just kidding, I'm playing Paladin. And it's like, no, I thought you were going to play that something else. Uh, and we're going to re it once again. Uh, and, and you're going to just see the exact same tug of war happen back and forth, whether or not they can get the Sea Giants. Uh, and, and, and again, Nick Slay, even despite the fact that he was super far behind, was really close to winning at one yeah. point. Yeah, that game was definitely definitely very, very close for quite a while. Uh, we, we did have that Dark Peddler turn where if he got a Soul Fire, he got a Power Overwhelming, he just would have won on the spot. And right. I think that's what really the Zoo Warlock was missing for such a long time. People felt like because Zoo was relatively honest with how it ends the game. It's like, if I have a big board, I'll kill you. Usually what I have is like a Doom Guard, maybe. Uh, but having Leroy Jenkins add this element of mystique of the deck, like, I don't know how much I can get away with anymore. Uh, and all of a sudden, I have to really respect your damage. I think the, the big addition, I think, with Dark Peddler, because Dark Peddler not only adds that additional ability to, sure. to generate burst out of the possibility for power overwhelming or soul fire, but also with Leroy Jenkins, gives you the ability to, to hold that all in your hand, unlike Doom Guard, and just go for the huge burst at once with even no board. Right, I feel like we've seen a lot of clip videos in the past couple uh, months here with the three and even four power overwhelming <laughs> games uh, just chained together at the end to just do incredible amounts of damage. So Zeus certainly with Leroy Jenkins and the potential for extra power overwhelmings can do a lot more damage than they used to be able to do. All right, well, we are back into game number three once again. Yep. And uh, we were we were talking at the beginning of the last game about those sort of key uh, key openings in this matchup. Uh, we see quite a few of the very good cards in in, in both players' hands. Uh, the Imp Gang boss for Nick Slay, I imagine, will keep that. Uh, Doctor Hippie, do you think you might even keep all of these cards? You know, with the ability to generate a pretty fast board, that Sea Giant's pretty attractive. It does feel attractive. However, I think he is worried about um, if his opponent gets on the board slightly before him, and then he can't really benefit off of the proper trades. Part of what makes Sea Giant really good is that if you have a big board, you can also trade efficient, uh, really effectively, get Sea Giant, and then use it as a way to like really trump your opponent. Um, I, I wouldn't be opposed to just replacing Sea Giant and going for like the Imp Gang bosses or even other cards like Flame Imp and Voidwalker if they're in your deck. 
Another consideration to come up is, I do not believe we've seen Nixley Zudek have a big game hunter over the course of this weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm sure Dr. Hippie knows better, obviously what has been shown on screen thus far. So if you know he has a BGH, you might not keep the Sea Giant, but by keeping it, I kind of wonder if Nixley is not well running done. it. Well, it's cool, he chose to keep it. You know, I, I don't really mind being able to just say, if I have the board, I win, and just go for the blowout. So I think Dr. Hippie is making a really bold mulligan and going along Kibber's line, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, well, Nick Slay here with not a, a great opening hand. He, he has no play on turn one, and as of now is looking, he's just gonna have a life tap on turn two. So Dr. Hippie looks to be in, uh, in a pretty good spot already. Right, there are some matchups where you might be able to get away with not having a turn one play, but in this one, you really have to have a turn one play, and you really need to have a turn two play. And we see the soonest Nixley is going to be able to get on the board based on these cards is on turn three. This this looks like it might be one of those games where I'm playing on uh, on ladder, and you know my opponent life taps in turn two. I'm like, okay, it's a control warlock deck. But then <laughs> suddenly out of nowhere, and now you're nowhere new ruby and eggs and haunted creepers. And you're like, like, Wait well, a minute, what's going right. on? Yeah. Double Argent Squire, very sticky and plays really well into that condition of getting the Sea Giant out early. Yeah, and, and be able to follow that up with, oh, and Nick Slay drawing another uh, another expensive card is just going to have Life Tap on turn two. It is quite unfortunate because if you look at the three most expensive cards in this deck outside of Dr. Boom, it is Leroy Jenkins, Lothep, and Sea Giant, uh, which Nick Slay has in his, in his hand. Uh, you know, Nick is Nick Slay is also surprisingly calm with his emotions, and I think he's trying everything he do to contain himself because right now he's definitely unhappy with how things have gone. Wow. Doctor Hippie actually looked across the table with the life tap. Like, he didn't switch to handlock, did you? Are you allowed to do that? <laughs> I don't think that's how the rules work. All right, did you bring uh, you two different warlock decks? <laughs> <laughs> well, we we know you cannot bring two different warlock decks. No, it's not allowed. You will get uh, you will get disqualified for that. Oh, the reliquary seeker, Doctor Hippie. <laughs> He is, he's, he's all in on this, uh, on this board this flood approach, plan, yeah. yeah. And, I mean, and, and frankly, with the start that, that, that Nick Slay has had, it actually looks like a game in which he may be able to set this up pretty well. Yeah, Voidwalker and Haunted Creeper on this turn uh, leads to a very sticky board that is well protected from that imp gang boss. And yeah, that Reliquary Seeker might become a giant pretty soon. Well, and there's also a giant, actual giant well, in not, the hand as well. It won't become that giant. <laughs> It'll become smaller than a giant, but still relatively large. Interesting consequence of this, Nick Slay will be able to play his Giant before Dr. Hippie. Yeah, if he, if he so chooses, he can actually just play Giant this turn. He can also attack with the Imp Gang boss, play a 2 oh, man yeah, you're right. and play a Sea Giant as well. So he gets the free development of a Nubrian Egg or a Haunted Creeper. Which, now that you have cards like Defender of Argus, the Nubrian Egg might not be that bad. So let's see what Nick Slade chooses right here. He has a mixture between Haunted Creeper, which has more stats immediately, but Ruby Neg is also an investment if you want to play. It. I think on this board you want the Creeper uh, simply because there are there are those things like the Argent Squires you want to be able to attack into. You have you have good things to uh, taunt up with the Defender of Argus already. Well, this game is, you know, went from Nixley having very little to suddenly... <laughs> right. Yeah, it went from 0 to 60 real quick. <laughs> kind of how Sea Giant works here, but uh, it's gonna not going to get uh, any any less explosive from Dr. Hippie here. He has the ability to just play an 8-8 eight eight and a 5-5 five five this turn and have mana left over. Hey, that's zoo life, man. It's like those toys when you put in the water little sponges and they grow really quickly. Like That's exactly what that zoo board was. <laughs> Dan, Brian, please, you're old enough to get that reference, right? Somebody bought you that disappointing gift for your birthday once. You're like... Uh, I did not get gifts on my birthday, Rob, and thank you for reminding me. How Dan, I'm so sorry. Do you want to get dinner after this, man? <laughs> <laughs> You're paying, right? Uh, uh, yeah. You are now. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, you know, Dr. Hippie, he's, he has his own sea giant, which once again, it'll get really intense quickly. But the important thing is Nick Slate gets his out first, which means he gets to pick up really good trade. Oh, there's that Reliquary Seeker coming out. And three sea giants from the government coming out. Yeah, yeah Nick Slay, <laughs> unhappy to see that. He's like, really? You have a Sea Giant too? Again, just how quickly Zoo develops these immensely powerful boards. Just throw down a 5 5 for one, an 8 8 for free. <laughs> oh no, Nick Slay. He's <laughs> not like this. He is frazzled. Well, you know, uh, Defender of Argus allows him to trade to Sea Giant very favorably, but the problem is that the follow up trade's not that great. Uh, and he does have some ways to. So to impact the board, but what's the best line of, line of play right now? If he goes for a defender, it actually just feels pretty weak. 
Yeah, Defender here is not super exciting. There is st there is the 5-5 the five five on, the, on the other side, that, as well as a bunch of 1-1s uh, one with Divine Shield that can just finish off that Sea Giant if he did try and Defender trade. There is the Im Implosion, which could potentially allow him to trade the rest of his board to get the 5-5 five five off. Right. Uh, but Dr. Hippie still just has so much threat and so much of it so diversified over so many minions, uh, as well as that Defender of Argus waiting in his hand. Yeah, he's running out of time, too. Leroy to help yeah. control. I mean, hey, you don't have to give him wealth. So right, no, I, this this is, is also fine too. Yeah, it, it does take away some of Nick Slay's uh, explosive potential, but the Leroy with no drawback, just a trade as a six power minion, is, is definitely attractive here. Yeah, we forgot about the fact that the board's too full for the whelps. So Nick Slay taking advantage of it while he can, and also being very efficient with his mana. That was a that was a really good play here. Yeah, I, I like that play from Nick Slay there. He uh, he definitely was able to deal with. Most of the power on Dr. Hippie's side of the board, that knife juggler from Dr. Hippie yeah. with both those creepers could be real scary, though. Just go for that full clear there and just lock Nixley up the board, at least for now. And it's important to note here that uh, you know, while, while Nick Slay has been able to remove a lot of the threat from Dr. Hippie's board, he's already down to 17 while Dr. Hippie's at 30. So even if he is able to sort of battle back here, he's got a long road to climb. Yeah, definitely. Because Dr. Hippie has a full board control, and then uh, Nick Slay will just have to be really careful about the trades. He might have to overtrade because he's afraid of dying. Yeah, Dr. Hippie does choose to just go with uh, clearing off pretty much everything. There is a big mm. game hunter in Nick Slay, so we see him. <laughs> wow. <sort> of a, <laughs> Where were you? <laughs> he looks just like me when yeah. exactly that happens to me on ladder. He's, uh, <laughs> Come on. Right now, he's sitting down and having a heart to heart with big game hunter. He's like, listen, man. You, I needed you last turn. Like, I want to pay you, man, and I want to keep you here, but your performance <laughs> is spotty, and I think we need to go Quarterly in different directions. with the big game hunter. Ooh, didn't show up that one time. <laughs> You're late every time. <laughs> yeah, tardiness is not great in this scenario. Rolls a four All implosion, right. though. All that's right. pretty great. Uh, that's as good as it gets. And that, I mean, that's a full board. Yeah, but we will have the knife juggler with the ability. Ooh! Oh, oh no! Oh, oh no. no! Oh no! This is. We're gonna see a lot of anima animations coming out pretty fast. Just all juggles to the face. I, I and mean, just juggle, juggle, attack. Oh. Not relevant Into here. Into one, one. Yeah. yeah. Knife well, juggler. Knife it is relevant implosion. because if the game is not over in a turn, there's two jugglers and an implosion. Now here we yeah. go. Yeah. Let's see how these knives fly. Uh oh. Yep. Oh, oh no! <laughs> What happened? Dr. Hippie may need to have a talk with his knife jugglers. Well, There's now he juggled that was, even more. That was actually a horrible result for Dr. Hippie. He he spawned in a ruby and, and only killed one of the one ones. Well, he, he can trade in the second creeper <laughs> he here. He can, he can, but he was really hoping to just be able to keep the pressure on with those two minions, I imagine. Yeah, it's just one of those things where it ended up, instead of being a cool action movie, it ended up being a... Uh, a comedy between two knife jugglers. <laughs> I was gonna say it was, it was like, more like who hired Jackie Chan and Chris like, Tucker da, 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 da. <laughs> Rush Hour Four. <laughs> the uh, the knife jugglers had Stormtrooper aim. They're just not they hitting they really anything did. good whatsoever. Put right, Napster in their head. No, no, I won't. <laughs> well, uh, Nick Slay can stop some of the bleeding. Uh, the problem is that these knife jugglers will still be a threat even if you shut off things like spells. So Nick Slay. <laughs> going to set up a Defender of Argus and cross his fingers, hope not to die. <laughs> there you go. There, you know, just the implosions in the trades alone might kill him. Oh! oh. Jugglers, are, they're getting better. Oh! They had, their, they had their quarterly review, much like Big Game Hunter. Yeah, so. they really want to keep their jobs. <laughs> so, oh Gormok. dear. You got an implosion, right? You, you got to do it. Well, there's, I mean, the... He can't. Oh, he can't cast both of them. Yeah, but right. The the Gormok can take down pretty much all of that. And right, where are the juggles? Oh man. And we're not quite able to close the game out here. And that's gonna be it. Oh no, we are. With yeah, the, uh, the, juggles the juggles do get to attack. Well, well actually, exactly. well, actually, <laughs> I, I forgot the night juggles get to attack too. <laughs> so there's a happy ending to this clown fiesta. <laughs> Uh, depends. Uh, depends where you're sitting oh, there. Oh, look at that! A smile from Dr. Hippie there. He actually cracked a smile. The stoic Ukrainian, uh, clearly happy to get out of the with, with the win. Oh, sure. It feels good to win. It feels good, man. Yeah. yeah. He came here to have fun, but yeah, you'll you'll also take the win. Some people spend their entire lives chasing that feeling, and in this case, Dr. Hippie has it. He's up two games to one.
Uh, really good spot to be in, considering he has to just win one game with his Paladin as his final deck. Now, uh, before we go into game number four, we're going to head over to Nipsch. Uh, for an interview with Pokervach, who's also playing in the winner's match. I think a lot of people are really anticipating uh, hearing what he has to say. So let's check in with Nimsh. Uh, how's it going over there, and what, what's Pokervach thinking about? It's going great, Dan, and I'm here with Pokervac. Actually, how do you say your nickname? Is it Pokervac, Pokervash? It's Pokrovac in English, and in Czech, it's Pokrovac. Pokrovac. All right, Pokrovac, uh, tell me, this is the final day, and suddenly it became single elimination for you. Uh, does it affect you at all? No, probably not. I'm still confident into this tournament. Okay, and uh, we are obviously in the middle of the Dr. Hippie uh, game and versus Nick's Day. Who do you want to win? Who are you rooting for? I want to win of the Nick's claim uh, because I have much better lineup on him because he's playing exactly the decks which I was trying to counter. All right, so you're confident overall and uh, you're going to take the whole tournament? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> All right, guys, so this is Poker Rush for you and I think uh, the players are almost ready for the next game, so Dan, take it away. You know, last week we had a, a young kid under the age of 18 who couldn't vote for his president. And uh, I th and he was also saying the exact same things. He's like, you know what? I think I made really good calls for the metagame. And, you know, if this player wins, I think I'm going to be in a really good spot. It seemed, it seemed a little bit borderline too confident, but it ended up backing it up and winning the entire America's Championship, displaying very good skill and preparation. And Pokovac is... It reminded me of that a lot. Yep. And uh, Amnesiac last weekend also brought a deck that was not really on people's radar for mm -hmm. that tournament. He pl he brought that uh, Anything Can Happen Paladin deck. And Prokovac here with the Priest deck, which was not something people were expecting. Yeah, exactly. So going into game number four, uh, Dr. Hippie might be throwing a wrench into the plans of Pokervach. He wants Nick Slay to take this victory. But, uh, oh, I apologize. He actually has the Druid. I, I mistakenly said Paladin. I was looking at Nick Slay's line up uh, on the notes here. Uh, Dr. Hippie has to just win one game with Druid, and that's even better in my opinion. I think uh, Druid has much more consistency than Paladin in this tournament so far. Yeah, certainly. Though the Druid uh, does tend to struggle with that Zoo Warlock deck, which we did just see, which uh, Nick Slate does have remaining. Sure. We'll see if it's able to overcome it. But right now, if we take a check up on the series, I think Dr. Hippie is feeling it right now. What do you think, Rob? Uh, I think, again, you, you clearly want to challenge me to a pun game I have no interest in playing, but definitely Dr. Hippie has to be feeling good uh, going into this, just needing one more win to make it to the semifinals. Right. Well, here is that matchup between the Druid and the Warlock. And uh, this is a matchup, as we said, that tends to pretty strongly favor the Warlock. Druid is usually not able to get on board that quickly. It really needs those draws with Innervate, not even just Wild Growth, but usually Innervate, uh, in order to, to get a board presence fast enough to really deal with the board that Warlock is able to, uh, able to create very fast. It's true. However, Druid is also has a way to get fast onto the board, assuming they have um, those early game plays. So you can anticipate Dr. Hippie probably throwing away those Dr. Booms and the Druid of the Claws. Needs those Innervates. Uh, even Wild Growth is sometimes too slow, but I think you'd rather have it than this hand. This hand looks very awkward, to say the least, from Dr. Hippie. Well, there is that big game Hunter, who, if Nick Slay does happen to get out of board with Sea Giant, uh, will come in handy. The problem is, once they get to the point where they have that Sea Giant, you are pretty often just buried. Ooh, Living Roots as the first drop for Dr. Hippie is huge here. Uh, that will give him something that can actually interact with the early players from Nick Slay, but Voidwalker is great at stopping those one ones. Yeah, I think Nick Slay having early game play is a sharp contrast uh, to what he had the previous game, where nothing until turn three. And the rest of Doctor Hippie's hand still not looking that good, so he is going to need a little bit of help just off the top of his deck. Curious if Nick Slay chooses to coin out this Argent Squire as well. Uh, Voidwalker does a good job contesting these roots. No immediate danger. We'll probably see the hero power come out from Dr. Hippie just to deal with it, unless there is something better like a wild growth or an innervate. Hey, even innervate doesn't exactly scream of easy play for Dr. Hippie right. next turn, because uh, he only has access to four mana. He would love to play the Azatric. Uh, so right now, Dr. Hippie not going to waste much time, just hero power. I like it. Sometimes players add this next level Inception mind game. Oh, I'm going to hold on turn two and not do anything. He just hero. <laughs> Well, MK Boss, one of the better cards against you as well. You get it ahead of whatever you can play on turn three. Um, but you also have the opportunity to develop cards like Knife Juggler when your opponent has clearly didn't wild growth. So 
there are a couple of options here for Nick Slay. I think I like Imp Gang Boss being coined out here. So you know your opponent's going on to turn ability. three. Won't necessarily have a swipe to just cleanly deal with it. It looks like he's favoring that knife juggler. Uh, again, Dr. Hippie going into three won't have the ability to do something like Keeper of the Grove with it. It does just decide to knife juggler and use the coin as well. Uh, wants to get that Argent Squire out and start getting more pressure on. I think this is a much more flexible play. Um, you see that your opponent doesn't really do anything on turn two. He hero powered. If he didn't have a wild growth, so I mean he can't have four mana to play Keeper of the Grove and punish this. And because you get Argent Squire out now, cards like Abuse Sergeant get way better. I actually like just Savage Roar to kill the Knife Juggler here from Dr. Hippie. Uh, Savage Roar is a card that generally is used in Druid as sort of a big combo finish, but right now Dr. Hippie has no other tools to deal with this Knife Juggler immediately, and he's able to just sort of face tank it and, and get it off the board here if he does choose to Roar. Yeah, uh, the Big Game Hunter, you know there's multiple targets in the deck that you want to aim at. Sometimes in matchups where you anticipate Big Game Hunter not even getting any value off of its battle cry, you can just play it as a 4-2 minion and then try to fight back. Dr. Hippie, though, he feels confident having swipe. So he says, you know what? I don't have to use Savage Roar. Okay. It's going to prepare the way. Although, what does that really communicate to Nick Slay when you willingly <laughs> take that damage? <laughs> Probably, uh, probably swipe, you know, Dan. I'm not a super high-level Hearthstone player, but even I'd be like, there's something up here. <laughs> Something's probably coming on a, turn four. I'm not a scientist, but this looks like... I mean, I'm not a doctor, <laughs> but... It, cert it definitely asserts dominance in it some does, way. I mean, I, Dr. Hippie made that attack while looking at Nick Slay. I think... Uh, yeah, it's almost a it's testosterone filled play. Testosterone filled play as it gets. I'm sorry, I'm just tripping <laughs> over my words. Uh, we do see the swipe take out the Imp Gang boss. We'll leave two one ones for Nick Slay here, thanks to the trigger of the Imp Gang boss and the Divine Shield. Knife Juggler with a with parting his, shot. Yeah, with his dying <laughs> breath. as he falls over. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and then Bran, we could see Bran abusive. Just get that. You've get already you. you've seen one swipe. Yeah. I like it. Just get aggressive. If, if Brand survives, you've got Dark Peddler on the follow-up yep. turn, draw two cards, so... Uh, and again, you've got the Druid down to 15 health on turn five for the Druid. Right, this is really complicated for Dr. Hippie at this point. Like, cards like Azure Drake doesn't necessarily mean the board is secure whatsoever. Innervate means he can also address one of these minions, uh, killing off the Abusive Sergeant. However, Nick Slay is, is such a big threat. Ooh, oh, that is... That's a Big draw from Nick Slay there. The double defender, thanks to Bran, uh, is going to give him huge board presence. Yeah. I have to imagine he plays that over the, the the peddler. Right, and I think he's kind of living for the moment, and he's already got the Drew down to 15. You're going to be pushing a lot of damage, have a very durable board. I'd like to see the defender of Argus myself. Would you trade to the Drake at all, or would you just play aggressive? I, I kind of like trading to the Drake, if only because it keeps your opponent from being able to potentially play a spell power swipe to kill more of your board. Oh, yep. he's actually just going to choose to yeah clear it off with the brand. And this this is kind of the the, uh, the uh, sort of happy medium. He didn't trade off one of uh, any of the power on his board. He does weaken his brand a bit, but that's not really a big deal. He he is able, still has a really strong board presence. It's just going to be able to close up the game very very quickly. It's true. Not to mention Dark Peddler might also grab you the damage if you're missing some yep. on board. Dr. Hippie has uh, eight mana this turn. Force of Nature usually is what you want to clear a bunch of small minions like this, so he's going to have to innervate out and really try to stay alive, but are you really alive? It's, it's hard to say. Eh, I mean, you're, you're going through the motions where you're just trying to stabilize the board, but I think Dr. Hippie understands just what a bad spot he's in. Yeah, it's looking quite grim. He is, uh, he's able to su survive a potential four-point burst from that peddler, but not much more than that. We do see Life Tap come down first. Leroy, Ooh. not enough mana. Oh, Leroy, if only you were four mana. Once upon a time. The kids won't get that reference, Dan, but yeah, I got you know it. What? Not everyone played it. <laughs> Leroy Jenkins used to be four mana. I was going to say, we're going to be in the, uh, the Hearthstone old person's home someday talking about, we used to have four-day Leroy's back in my day. It's true, and I, I'm still shaking from those days, <laughs> even as I, as I speak. Because of Miracle Rogue, or? Uh, no, just because men with white beards intimidate me. Wow. It's understandable. Yeah. White beards, huh? Well, huh. that should be it. Yeah. Leroy Jenkins going to end the game and send it into game five for with a greetings. chance to go into the top four. Nick Slay uh, following up his greetings from his previous win with the greetings in this win. So. Mm. Yeah, Nick we'll Slay see. stretches, looks very relieved there. 
going to this game five, not out of it yet. And anytime your back's to the wall and you're facing elimination, huge sigh of relief to get anything going. And he did say in his interview that he was hoping this went to five games. He thought it would go to five games. And now we are going to the fifth game. That is right. And if it's the matchup that he wanted, it, it's, it's kind of hard to say. These days, the Druid versus Paladin uh, is very back and forth, depending on how you're building your decks. Uh, it looks like Nick Slay is playing much more of a standard list uh, that we're used to accustomed seeing on the ranked play. So uh, if that's going the case, then I would say it's pretty even. I'm, I'm not sure who's exactly favored here, but the most important thing is whoever wins will move on to play in the top four and chance to stay alive in the championship. Yeah, uh, Perkovac did say he was hoping Nick Slay would win. He may get his wish. Yeah, but he was saying it from a perspective that he thinks he can beat Nick Slay. Exactly. So it's not even like a friendly, not for him. you know what, Nick Slay's a great guy, I want him to win. You know, he makes all these great phases and stuff. It's, it's not about that at all. It's just like, you know what, I think I have a higher chance of becoming a champion if this guy wins. I like that call out because then if Nick Slay wins this game, goes on to beat Pokervatch, I think that's a really <laughs> funny story. All right, Pokervatch, as you pointed out, just as confident as Amnesiac before him. So it uh, would be a great opportunity for Nick Slay. All right, well, Nick Slay, can he make the comeback? He's one game away from being able to do that against Dr. Hippie. Before we go to game number five, let's get one more chance to get to know Nick Slay before we head into this game. I think I'm more invested in the games I play than the other people here. I think it's, yeah, I show more emotions and I don't know. Maybe I'm more of a role player than the other ones. When my hero takes damage, I also take damage in real life. This guy, why would you say these things? I am so sorry, Nick Slay. I am so oh, sorry. Nick Slay. I am cursive to the fates. He's going to be so upset with you. If he watches uh, the bots, right, he's going to be very upset with you. I'm Nick Slay. My real name is Philip Payne, and I'm from Germany. I don't really feel pressured. I think I'm going into this as an underdog. Uh, something that could get punished. Going to be so much damage. Nick Slay sitting there. He sees it. He's almost there. He's almost to the round of eight, almost to the Europe Championships. He can feel it. And oh, there's the concede. Wow. Nick Slay is moving on. The best part about the event is playing the game. You get an hour in a best of five to perform as well as you can and you try to deliver and win the series. Of course it feels better if you win. I don't really have a lot of practice partners, I don't have people I talk to very regularly, so I, I don't have that kind of team or something or Skype group that I'm in. I might be at a disadvantage, but if I win my series it's fine, right? I don't know if I'll go full time, but I'll invest a lot of time into it. I'll stream if people want to stream. Winning at BlizzCon would mean a lot to me. It kind of shows that you're the best player in the world and you made it. You beat everyone else. Everyone tried to be there and you're the one who made it. If I win BlizzCon, I'll probably set my account to busy permanently so that I don't have to answer all the messages they sent to me. <laughs> If people want to see more of me, they will get more of me. Well, I have one tip for Nick Slay if he ends up uh, going all the way and starting his own streaming career is get a webcam. Oh, yeah. Please. Because <laughs> people want to see more of him. Oh, yeah. But mostly his expressions. It's, it's just great. And as a man who is also known primarily for his expressions, I think Brian Kilberg could <laughs> fully relate to, to entertaining the masses in that capacity. Yeah, he promised that if people want more of him, they will get more of him. And I, I personally want to see more of Nick Slay regardless of how he fares in this final matchup against Dr. Hippie. So you're putting your vote in uh, Camp Nick Slay? I, well, he started right with that video. He said, I'm a role player, so he naturally got my oh, vote. There you go. Uh, because so. Soddle's <laughs> you obviously... You guys are two peas in a pod. Right, Soddle's going to vote for the other guy, so someone has to <laughs> uh, be voting for the role player. Yeah, when, when his hero takes damage, he takes damage in real life. I love it. I love it. All right, well, I'm going to go with Dr. Hippie here. I feel like he's also played well enough, but... In the end, it doesn't really matter what we say. It matters how the cards play. Let's go into game five. Druid versus the Paladin. Can Dr. Hippie finish off what he started here? Remember that it all started with those awkward 100 draws in this series, but then he started climbing back into an advantage, and now Nick Slay had to fight back despite losing that Warlock Mirror, which was soul crushing. Uh, this matchup can be pretty tough on either side if the board builds up very fast, and there are some cards that can help him. Uh, based off these opening mulligans, what are we keeping? What are we throwing away? 
Well, that minibot, you want to keep that one. <laughs> uh, I would expect to see Dr. Hippie probably keep the, the living roots, just give him a little bit of early interaction, uh, can kill something like a knife joke if it does come down. Uh, and yeah, I, I mean, I think there's some argument that you might want to keep Avenge because generating a big minion early on against Druid is fairly powerful. But I think you probably want to go back and try and find uh, try and find a more significant element to your curve. I want to present one more question to you, and I'm going to again go back to Kibler. Uh, apologies, Rob. But just it's cause... okay. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> just ask Brian. I, I'm not good at this game. I'm, I'm going going back to Doc uh, to, to to Dr. Kibler. Dr. Kibler. Yeah, just for his analysis. Uh, some people have said that you always keep swipe against Paladins because you, as a Druid player, if you fall too far behind on board, swipe is your way to make sure to control the state of it. Uh, and I've heard that from several high-level players. Why Why do you think in this case, Dr. Hippie is also going against the grind of some of these players saying that? Well, I, mean, I, I think that the, the Living Roots gives you the ability to fight for the board fairly well early on, especially with two of them. Right, he's, he's got the second one. He's, the now, he's now actually well ahead on board uh, against Dr. Hippie, or rather against Nick Slay. And, uh, you know, that that avenge could still give uh, give Nick Slay something pretty uh, pretty nice here, but currently Doctor Hippie is able to just clear this off and prevent Nick Slay from actually getting multiple minions. I really like the aggression from Doctor Hippie. Realizes what's in his hand. He has a removal. He has an innervate for that turn three Drake if he wants it. Goes ahead and just puts down as much power as possible against the Paladin. You know he's going into turn two. You're not expecting to see any sort of consecration, which would be really the only clean answer. So instead, he's pretty much taking control of the board and can decide how he wants to deal with this minibot. Uh, he's already tested for Noble Sacrifice there with that first tree, and so really like this line of play from Dr. Hippie. Yeah, this is an extremely tempo-oriented matchup. The player who, who gets ahead very often stays ahead. And uh, that turn one of four treants hmm. can keep, can allow Dr. Hippie to contain Nixley's ability to ever get those multiple minions on board, to be able to activate that Avenge. And right now he's actually, he could even just innervate out this Shredder and keep his hand size really low so that Divine Favor in Nixley's hand also never does it. Dr. Hippie is very meticulous about how he navigates around these secrets. It's not Noble Sacrifice, the one that he actually tries to trigger first. Also crossing his fingers for no redemption, because Minibot's probably the best target early on to get it. And uh, now he has a pretty good idea of what it is. Either it is um, either it's Avenge or it is Competitive Spirit. Mm -hmm. So Nick's still here, not many great options. That that knife juggler would just die to the two uh, the two minions on board. Uh, Dr. Hippie did choose to just use his hero power to uh, to clear off the Minibot, so he can potentially use the Innervate to get out Drake and then just play the Shredder on Curve. Uh, so now, yeah, Nick Slay is not, not in the best of spots. No, not at all. And he has no minion to guarantee for Blessing of Kings on the following turn. So we could mm. be looking, if you're a Nick Slay, you might have two turns where you don't have any board. Yeah. And that might give Druid such a large advantage that you can't come back from. And this is one of the, the real costs of having a card like oh, Divine quickly. Favor in your deck. Right. Uh, Divine Favor, extremely powerful in control matchups. Uh, I know it's a card that gives me nightmares because I always love playing Duplicate Mage decks. <laughs> um, but but here, you know, it's, it's just almost going to be a dead card, perhaps for the entire game. Ooh, second option for that five drop for Dr. Hippie was looking at possibly just innervating out the Drake. Uh, now can choose to innervate out a Lothab. I think I like the Drake a little bit more, just because you might want to be saving the Lothab for a more intentional turn. You also get the card draw from the Drake. But more importantly, you'll just be able to go right into your turn four piloted Shredder next turn. So he's going to be really putting on the pressure and make Nick Slay have the answers. Yeah, Dr. Hippie with a, a great draw this game uh, and able to take uh, take advantage of a few uh, a few holes in Nick Slay's curve. Does she just go with the Lothab? And yeah, I really like the Lothab here because your opponent already showed that he has a very awkward hand mm -hmm. and this plays the best around cards like Choose Over Champion and really secures the board. So awesome. as much as I definitely identify with Azure Drake opening up more options in the following turn, I think this is also a great choice here from Dr. Hippie. Let's get the favorable juggle there. So it does get one thing that goes this way, but... Oh, right, the rules. Ooh. I forgot. There is a knife juggler on the board. <laughs> a keeper of the grove must be drawn. Yeah, so so now uh, Dr. Hippie does have the opportunity to possibly uh, use that keeper to kill juggler. That would trigger revenge and make the, the big minion. He could also simply uh, attack with his Lotheb into one of the minions, then uh, silence with the keeper. Uh, Probably yep. like clearing the minion mm. off because of the threat of something like that uh, that Blessing of Kings we do see in Nick Slay's hand. 
Yeah, it's true. And if he knows that Avenge is a possibility, he can also utilize Wrath. But I think the Keeper of the Grove here just gives you the most options. And Nixley, of course, not happy to see it. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that little text box describing Nixley is a pretty good accurate representation of his feelings on that play. Yeah, that turn. Oh, but that's a very good draw for Nixley there. Sludge Belcher actually giving him something which he can play. When he was really in a situation without that draw, uh, he had nothing to do that turn. Right, it kind of feels bad to just offer up your Sludge Belcher to the already heavily damaged Lothab, but uh, again, to your point, Brian, it's something to play, something that slows down the pressure a little bit. It's better than Lothab just hitting you in the face. <laughs> that is true. Lothab hits pretty hard. Well, Nixley has the Mysterious Challenger on turn six with Pulling Out Secrets and Dr. Boom. So we'll see. I mean, I've seen Druids be in positions like this and still not be able to close up the game. However, even cards like Azure Drake being on board makes it very good for uh, for Dr. Hippie. He's got ways like Wrath that can help control the state of the board as well. Um, we'll, we'll see how things end up going here. Boosted Wrath, no less. So that that's another, uh, I think, depth to this turn. Right. He's going to have more overall power to work with. A lot of times in this matchup, the Druid having big game hunter here in this specific moment would be an absolute dagger. So it's good thing for Nick Slay that Dr. Hippie doesn't have that, but he has more than enough resources to do some pretty upsetting things this turn. Well, with those two Wraths, he even has the opportunity to potentially just attack let the Avenge go on Challenger, and then Wrath it for four, Wrath it for four, thanks to the Azure Drake. Right. So he can even just keep the pressure up, and even use his hero power to kill the uh, the Redemption Defender here. So he can clear the entire board uh, of that Mysterious Challenger and keep the pressure on with Azure Drake. It looks yeah, like he's Slay. thinking about doing. He's crossing his fingers. He's like, okay, please don't just be Big Game Hunter. Actually, even if it is Big Game Hunter, I guess Dr. Boom is slightly safer. In the end, I think Nick Slay has no regrets. Playing the Mysterious Challenger means that you don't draw those secrets potentially off the top of your deck. Doesn't mean he's immune to drawing secrets, but he's gonna hopefully... Hopefully the laws of Hearthstone abide this game where the Boombot is attracted to Azure Drakes. You say hopefully, I thought you were it. on Dr. Hippie's side, Dan. Ah, when, when, you're, when you're casting from a player's point of view, you always put hope for the optimistic thing, right? Okay. So you're saying, if you're, you know, Nick um, Slay will hope for this. Sure. Yeah, the, the curve of uh, Challenger into Boom, still very powerful here. Uh, Dr. Hippie does have the board lead, but that can end very quickly thanks to the mm. good Doctor. It's Doctor versus Doctor. If Dr. Boom comes down, two Doctors doctor go in. I mean, it's One game five. Leaves. It's game five, and you have to defeat a Doctor. You're going to need a Doctor of your own. <laughs> and, and this, the, the Dr. Boom here, with that competitive spirit, uh, is potentially pretty threatening, too. Yeah. Because if if uh, Dr. Hippie does not use his resources to clear those Boom bots off, uh, they're going to get buffed and present more of a threat as well. So right now, Dr. Hippie doesn't really have a great way to answer this board. And we do see that cog hammer waiting in Nick Slay's hand. So if there is a big doctor remaining at the end of this turn, it's going to be a really threatening one. Right. And it, it, like you said, if he can't remove it, that might be the way he can carry the rest of the game. He's ready to use a keeper of the grove so he can't get past like the silence and divine, or sorry, the taunt and divine shield. I mean, Nick Slay still has a chance, even though Drew has been commandingly seizing the board. And these boom bots, I, I mean, I feel like I've been to a lot of magic shows in, in the past, watching some people perform on streets and in theaters, but I think Dr. Boom is the greatest magician I've ever seen. He makes everything disappear. Oh. Is it four? Wait, is it four? Was it the natural predator? Oh, oh only wow. One. Well, it was attracted to it, but uh, not quite enough to, to kill it. Yeah, those boom bots didn't hit the gym enough times. <laughs> But now, Nick Slay with an 8-8 Dr. Boom, a 2-2 Boombot, and this Cog Hammer. If Cog Hammer goes on Dr. Boom here, that's absolutely huge. It's still reasonable to play Blessing of Kings and then Cog Hammer That's true. Way. Well, he could also uh, trade in his Boombot into, mm. say, the Azure Drake, then play Cog Hammer's his guaranteed Divine Shield on Dr. Boom, use the Divine Shield to kill the 5-5, five five, and then use Cog Hammer to fin it off, finish off the Azure Drake. That's true, and you get to develop Pilot Shredder, too. I, I actually don't mind that. And then the op in the optimal scenario, too, you get to hit Boom to the face, and then you put him with 14 damage, mm -hmm. and you might be even the challenge for lethal. Mm -hmm. So that, that's actually pretty pretty interesting. There's a lot of ways you can sequence this. Yeah. And we'll see exactly what Nixley does. He's not much time now. Rope already burning. Okay, so he chooses to see the Boom Bot first. Ooh. Wow. Okay. Huh. It's kind of an awkward result. Yeah, it, it, it is a little bit, but still trade into it. 
Yeah, he was hoping to hit the Azure Drake there. Not quite attracted to its natural enemy. I don't know. It's like it's so, you're so scared for Druid, but it's like, at the same time, you, you want to also put pressure on. It's such a hard position to be in. Yeah, Nick Slate now down at 15. And Dr. Hippie, he does have Force Roar in his hand. So if he could use his uh, his keeper to silence that Dr. Boom to ensure that there's no taunt on board mm -hmm. and just try and develop more, if Nick Slate takes any more damage, Force Roar will be lethal. I think he is he is definitely in that uh, in that boat, except for one possible scenario, which is he drops a Tyrion Forder yep. yeah. and he gets <laughs> locked out of the game. From that point, it's I would say it's pretty much game over because you don't have a way to get past it. You have to use all of your 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 attack damage, your combo potential with Force Nature Savage Roar, just to get past this one minion, and then Nick Slay would run away with it. So it's one of these things that Dr. Hippie, is he gonna go for it? He has to evaluate it. Yeah, we he, said before, two turn lethals is a generally good play for Druid. He can use his hero power here to guarantee one damage if he wants, or play a shredder. Those are the two options. And but if if Nick Slay kills the shredder without taking damage, mm -hmm. then he no longer has lethal. Right. Unless Dick Dr. Hippie draws an innervate to get right. that extra For the extra one. So yeah, this is this is definitely very tense. This is a game where Dr. Hippie was pretty far ahead. Nick Slay had a couple of big turns, but Nick Slay is down in very dangerous range here. Mm -hmm. Let me And what comes out of the shredder could also really be important if Nick Slay gets a taunt. Or he could also possibly use that uh, play the Seeker Keeper and the uh, the Creeper, and then play that Divine Favor, draw three cards. If he finds a Noble Sacrifice, oh, you're he right. may be able to buy time as well. No. Keeper of Olamon, that doesn't that doesn't do what he needs here. Yeah, maybe he didn't dig deep enough. He was still keeping his options open. I think for five mana, he was hoping for he may have another, another Sludge, Sludge Belcher. Belcher. He gave himself a couple of draws for that. Or Lotheb even. Yeah, Lotheb, Lotheb might have been Lotheb, an opportunity yeah. to shut off the spells. Oh, oh no. no! He just sends it all to face, and there is nothing to defend him. Nick Slay is facing down Force Roar, and he has nothing to stop it. Oh, he looks over, but he's about to get the bad news. And you, you see him just. The prognosis don't do it. is coming don't in, do Dan. It. His the bedside manner has been delivered. You are dead. And yeah, Dr. Hippie is going to the top four That's for a, a chance to be the Europe champion. Uh, terminal case of the Savage Roar Force of Nature <laughs> combo. No recovering from that. Well played, Rob. Well played, Dr. Hippie, as he ends Nick Slay's run. What a great series back and forth going to the final game. You can tell. You know what? Maybe this, this, this is a little bit stressed. Yeah. There's a lot of nerves. You can see that he is extremely relieved to be able to take that victory. Yeah, that was definitely an incredibly close match, down to the wire there, and uh, at the end, Nixley just could not find a way to defend himself, and Combo took him down, as it has so many before him. Yeah, uh, definitely being able to continue on his journey with a unique lineup. He's got that hunter, he's got that freeze mage. Can he be the second player challenging for the championship with a hunter deck? I know inside Rob was cheering for Nick Slake's the emotion there, but I think the hunter player inside you was also pretty happy. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm upset about the lack of Wolf Riders in that deck, but I, I will cheer uh, for whoever brings the Hunter deck. Uh, That's no, well known. He has, he has, he has uh, Arcane Golem and Argent Horse Rider. You, you want to have all three, or do you think Wolf Rider just deserves a spot over those? I mean, Wolf Rider has charge, does three damage, hits people in the face. I, why would you run the problem? it? I, I suggest that you guys take it <laughs> offline while we hop over to Nimsh for a few words with our winner. It's Dr. Hippie going to the top four. I'm here with Dr. Hippie, and congratulations on the win. You advanced to the top four. Uh, the first question I have for you is uh, the, the bans. So uh, did you expect your ma mage being banned, and why did you ban the warrior? Yes, I expected the ban on my side. I banned the patron warrior because the patron warrior won all my clothes. Yes, I was expecting my mage to be banned, and I banned warrior because he would definitely win over all my decks. Okay. And um, when you just had Druid as your last deck, you were going into the zoo and into Secret Paladin. Were you worried that you will lose that one, or uh, have you felt confident that you can take those decks? I was a little bit nervous. I made a mistake in the second game, and I was expecting to win over Paladin, but to lose over Zoo. 
Okay, and uh, you're going to face Pokrovac. How do you feel about uh, that match overall uh, uh, Overall, with the lineups? Uh, Pokrovac wanted to face Nixley, but he's going to face you. So do you think he's uh, you're going to win that one? We shall see. I cannot say anything. All right, we will see, guys. But now I think TJ is ready on the analyst's desk to dissect the match. So TJ, take it away. Thanks very much, Nimsh. Yes, I'm here at the sidebar. I'm joined by my, <laughs> I was going to say the second French British cast in the room, but <laughs> that's a little bit wow. too mean, wow. a little bit too mean. Yeah, I've, right. I've been making shots at Raven all weekend, so I figured I should get him, but uh, glad to have you here. I want to talk a little bit first about um, that last play there. Uh, just just quickly, uh, there was a, a couple of outs that could have happened. Right. If you want to talk about it, we don't have a clip from that one, but if you want to talk about it real quick. Yeah, so. sure. So he deliberately divine favored for less cards at the start. By mm. He left more mana open, which would give him Sludge Belcher as an out. Yeah. After whiffing on that, there was cr silly things he could do with trading shredders so he could get Vitality Totem or yeah, a yeah. Taunt or something dumb. Um, but those situations are so niche, and you and I were sat back there inventing these ways that he survives <laughs> against combo. Yeah. But from his perspective... Um, it's more consistent for him to just say, okay, there's no combo in my mm -hmm. opponent's hand. I'm just going to make the strongest play on the board. So I have no issue with the line that he took. Yeah, there. definitely. Um, so let's uh, uh, switch gears here a little bit. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about Hunter. Hunter is a deck that only two people in the tournament have brought so far. And they're right. both in the top four now with Dr. Hippie and Naaman. Uh, we had a couple conversations backstage uh, before we jump into the clip that we have. We had a couple conversations about the, the tech choices. Right. Um, uh, specifically Hunter's Mark in a very aggressive Hunter. Hunter's Mark is usually a, a card that you find in mid-range Hunter. Yes. Uh, but uh, Dr. Hippie actually put it in his uh, aggressive Hunter. Why do you think this is and what does it usually replace? Uh, so usually it's in, it's in place of an IMB cow. It's a similar effect. It's mostly used to just punish through big taunts. Mm -hmm. um, the issue with Hunter's Mark is that after you've Hunter's Mark something, you still have to send a source of damage into it, whereas the owl bypasses it immediately. But I think the reason you include something like that in your deck is that it's more effective against Druid, because Druid is a class that you do have to trade with quite a lot as a face hunter. Yeah. You can't just owl a you know Druid of the Claw that was played on turn five and ignore it, because that thing is so aggressive on the board that when combined with Savage Roar, for example, then it starts to race you too effectively. So you want that Hunter's Mark to really punish the board. But we have a clip that kind of illustrates some of the strengths and weaknesses of, uh, of, of uh, Owl and, yeah. and Hunter's Mark, I uh, let, Let's take a look. Uh, this clip is from game one. I think this is a little bit different. Uh, this is just oh, sort okay, of... my bad. Yeah, this is just sort of illustrating um, one of the, the plays that Nixley actually is going to make early on here. And uh, a lot of times when you're playing as a Druid, uh, you can just get into a mindset where you automatically are playing Wild Growth on turn two, especially with a curve similar to this one. Uh, so we're going to uh, go ahead and, and uh, see exactly what Nixley is going to do uh, against a more aggressive deck like Face Hunter. Saddle, why don't you walk me through this? Yeah, so he's going to go ahead and just go for the instant mana spike here of the Innovate as opposed to the consistent one of the, the Wild Growth. And I think this is correct in this situation. As I said, like Druid against Hunter, the goal of the Druid player is to kind of get ahead on the board and be aggressive themselves. They mm -hmm. can't just play defensively the whole game. They can't just sit back and clear and clear and clear. They want to get they want to go one bigger on one turn and use that as a platform to be aggressive themselves, which is what we saw Nick Slay start to do. And this is true to an extent where Wild Growth is such a tempo loss for initially to, to set up the tempo game over the rest of the game that some Druid players even consider throwing it away to look for that big innovate play in the mulligan. Yes, uh, especially against like those more aggressive decks. Right, specifically As, against specifically, face yeah. decks, yeah, aggro so, and face hunter. Yeah, definitely uh, the right play. And that was a really exciting series. I went to all five games. A, a great series to start off the day, but we have plenty more action coming at you guys. We're going to jump into the second decider match of the day. But before we do that, let's check out some of the highlights from that last match.